Ooh, oh, oh. Oh, there it goes. Look at that. That's getting sucked in there. After I built this DIY fire pit, you guys told me you wanted to see a smokeless version. Now there are a ton of different videos out there and they use a lot of different techniques. So I don't really know which one's the best. And today we're gonna find out. So here's the basic fire pit that I made and it looks great, but the, there's no air openings around the sides. All the air for the flame has to come in from the top. Went ahead and got a good fire going here and you can see the smoke just rising up. And the biggest issue with smoke is trying to avoid it. And it seems like no matter where you go, the smoke is always in your face. I think what we need to do now is bust out the smoke bombs. So <laughs> these are actually smoke emitters that are used to test for air leaks in HVAC systems. And I just taped one to the end of a dowel and I'm gonna light this thing up and move it around the fire to see how the air gets pulled in for combustion air for the fire. I've never used these before, so I have no idea how much this is gonna smoke or what it's gonna do. So let's find out. All right, I'm gonna light this thing up. This thing's gonna like spark or what? Oh, there you go. Oh, oh, ooh. All right, let's see where the smoke is being pulled in. So it's not being pulled in at all into the sides here. There you can see it's really getting sucked down in there from that top edge. But right there, that's where it's getting the airflow from. All right, <laughs> that was kind of cool. So I wanna convert my fire pit into a smokeless fire pit design. They actually sell commercial versions of smokeless fire pits and the most popular version is the Solo Stove. Let me show you exactly how that works and looks on the commercial version and then we can look at how I'm gonna do the alterations to my own fire pit. Now, the way the Solo Stove works is it's kind of like an insulated coffee mug. So there's actually an outer liner here and then there's also an inner liner where the fire goes and that leaves this space in between where the air can flow, except instead of it being a vacuum like in your coffee mug, it's gonna be open so that air can flow through it. So air comes in through these sets of holes right here and then they show this on the picture and most of it goes in here in the bottom and goes up to the firewood and that just is the primary ignition and spurs the fire. But at the same time, some of that air is going to flow up this chamber and as it's going up, it's gonna get heated and then it's going to come out of these series of holes up here. And that is going to provide air flow to the top of the fire. Now, of course, the fire pit that I've built looks nothing like that. And it has a primary base of stone. And then we have a steel insert fire ring. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove some of those bricks around the bottom. And that's gonna allow the cold air to come in just like on the solo stove. Now, some air will then come in straight from the bottom up into the firebox. And then the rest of it is gonna be coming up here, but we need a place for it to come out at the top. So we need some of those holes. But the question is, do we want big holes, small holes, or maybe medium sized holes? And I don't know the answer to that. So that's what we're gonna test and find out today. Now there is about a two inch gap in between the ground and the bottom of the fire ring. So what I'll do is put in a layer of rock and then build that up two inches to reach to the bottom of the ring. And that means we'll also need some holes around the bottom so that we can let that air come in through the bottom as well as travel on to the top. So as that air is heated up, it rises up and then comes out of the holes to the top of the fire, giving it some more oxygen and allowing that smoke to be burned off in what is the secondary combustion. So that is exactly what we're looking for. That's our main goal. Another thing that I'm really hoping we can get is some of those flames actually shooting out of the top holes. And that happens when that air is so hot and superheated, it ignites coming straight out of the holes. It looks like it's a burner on top of a stove. And if we can get that, that will be absolutely amazing. So that's the idea behind what we're gonna do. Let's get going. So I've gone ahead and removed four of the bricks around this entire fire pit, one kind of on each quadrant, north, south, east, and west, if you will. Honestly, that's probably the easiest way to do it. <laughs> We've got to make sure that that air is getting to the fire. So I pulled out the fire ring and then I removed almost all of the lava rock. For all those folks who were saying lava rock is a bad idea, you are absolutely right. It was a pain in the butt to try to get the ashes out from the lava rock. But I went ahead and put some pavers in here and these are aligned directly with the stones that I removed. So the air should be able to come in here, hit these channels and hit the underneath of the fire, much like one of those smokeless designs. So it's time to light up another fire and bust out the smoke bombs. All right, I got the fire going and as you can see, it is super smoky. Now, I know that this wood is not as dry as the guy told me it was who sold it to me. Uh, so, you know, that's going to provide some extra smoke, but that should just show us how efficient we can get it. Now, for the spirit of proper data collection on this test, I have labeled above each of the holes A, B, C, and D. So, I'm going to go ahead and light this up and then uh, we can see if all four holes are drawing in because I kind of feel like uh, a couple of them aren't. All right, so we're going to start over here on the A side. Definitely drawing it in. B side, also. Go to the C side. 
also drawing it in and the D side. So we've got airflow going in on all four sides, feeding into the fire. Now, honestly, I can't really tell a huge difference, uh, definitely not in the smoke by opening up. There's definitely more airflow, but what's it doing? And when you put that white smoke in there, it just kind of mixes with the other white smoke and you can't really tell what's going on. But I've been holding out on you guys. That's right, I've got orange smoke bombs. Go Vols. So I'm fire one of these up and we'll see where that air is really going. Oh, the cat is chasing a snake. <laughs> we won't tell Susan that. All right, let's light up this orange, see what we can see. Ooh, oh wow. Oh, look at that. It's not really going underneath and feeding the fire. Oh, no, there it goes. Look at that. That's getting sucked in there. Oh, that's cool. Let's go to the back side. It's just kind of like going up in the air. It's not really going underneath the fire at all. So I'd say just by removing the bricks, it'll definitely give your fire more oxygen. I just don't know this makes it that much more efficient, and it really doesn't cut down on the smoke as much as I thought it might. All right, we definitely have the supply air that we need for that smokeless design, but now we need to distribute it out of the top for that coveted secondary combustion in that heated air. So I'm going to take the fire ring into the shop and we can start drilling some holes. Oh, that's heavy. Let's talk about the location and the size of the holes. And because I am somewhat of a nerd, I went ahead and looked up the patent for the solo stove and I found it. So they say that the holes can range in size all the way up to 0.8 inches at the top and then the lower holes are one inch. But I have seen other videos here on YouTube where people are using all the way up to two inches and all the way down to a half inch. So what I'm thinking is we try them all out and see what the airflow looks like coming out of them. And I'll do that all on the same ring. And then we'll throw the smoke bombs in there and see how that air is shooting out and see if it tells us anything about the airflow for that secondary combustion. I've got the fire ring set up on the bench and I'm hoping that this is a good setup to drill it in. I think I'm gonna drill from the inside, but it kind of looks like just like an interdimensional portal. I could just reach in there and pull out <laughs> nice. I want to evenly space out the holes. I'm going to use this little trick that I saw from Haxman, who's like the godfather of smokeless DIY fire pits here on YouTube. He uses blue tape so that I know the exact distance of it with the blue tape. Now I can take it off, put it on a flat surface, make my measurements, and then put it back on. And it just makes it really easy instead of trying to get a tape measure in on this curved surface and mark everything. Now I can just use the center punch on there and that'll get me a good start for drilling my holes. All right, I'm going to start off with the one and a half inch and I'm going to use a hole saw to do that, then go to the one inch with another hole saw and then move over to a step bit. I will be wearing some eye protection, which has a nice little face mask on it too. And, uh, you know, we're just going to go Mad Max on this thing and hopefully I don't drill through my bench. See how it goes. I found it a lot easier to drill some pilot holes in the ring first before going in with that larger hole saw. I'm also spraying some WD-40 multi-use product on there to keep things lubricated. A WD-40 brand is the sponsor of today's video. I'm using the Trigger Pro non-aerosol can here, and it's great for spraying down a large area, but still having control and not making a lot of mess. Now it obviously helps lubricate the cut, but it was also making a little slurry of chips in the liquid there. So instead of the chips flying off, they're kind of bunching together around the hole because of the lubrication and the liquid there holding them together. Every time I'm working with the WD-40 original formula, it just takes me back to being a kid in my garage, working with my dad, either on my bike or the lawnmower. And there's just a great heritage in history with WD-40 brand. But they are more than just their original formula. They have a full range of next level solutions to help you get the job done right, including their specialist lineup with the dry lube, white lithium grease, and rust soak remover, which are some of my favorites. I'm going to have a link down below in the description where you can go check them out and where to buy them. And a big thank you to WD-40 brand for sponsoring today's video. All right, I'm super excited about this. This thing is looking awesome. So here on the A side, I've got the one and a half inch holes. I've got five of them there. On the B side, we've got the one inch holes and I did seven of them. Over here, I did half inch holes on the C side and I did 10 and then I doubled that amount, actually a little bit more, and I did 22 holes over here on the D opening. So I'm gonna be able to light these up. We're gonna put some smoke bombs in here and see where the airflow goes. But first I'll stoke up a fire and get it going and really heat up this firing. All right, we've been going for about 45 minutes now and you can see we are still very smoky, but uh, I've got the little smoke bombs. I just got a little piece of two by four and I'm going to light it and then set it in the hole so I can kind of have my hands free. And we'll start with the A side with the one and a half inch holes and then I'll try to move it around and then we can see how that smoke is coming out of those holes, if any. And I know there's gonna be a bunch of big leaks, so let's check it out. 
All right, guys, I am jumping in from the next day, and I took a seat because I needed it after the beating I took last night. Uh, I'll give you the highlights, but basically, I was trying to get the smoke to come through the holes and show which ones were the best, and it went everywhere. <laughs> except through the holes. And that's because of these tumbled stones. These stones are just uneven and organic. They look amazing. I love the look of them, but they just have so many gaps in the smoke and the air. We're going everywhere except through those holes. So we're gonna try to make this work still. I've got some quick set mortar and I'm gonna put it around the inside to try to fill up all the gaps in the top two rows. And then we'll put the ring back on there and see if we can make it work. But uh, yeah, if you're thinking about using tumbled stones for a smokeless fire pit, yeah, maybe don't do that. The mortar is all set up, and honestly, this turned out way better than I expected. Uh, it doesn't look good, but uh, everything is very solid now. Nothing is shaking anymore, and more importantly, all of the gaps are plugged up. So now I could put the ring back in here. We could really get a test to see if that air starts flowing out. Now, there are going to be some gaps around the rim. I already did a little test fit, so I am going to put some aluminum foil underneath the lip of the ring just to act as a little gasket, but don't worry. There won't be foil in there at the end. I've got a plan for that. All right, we were ready for the fire, but I wanted to show you real quick. Uh, I did go ahead and put some gravel in there as well as a paver stone so that uh, it'll be a lot easier to clean everything out. Also, you'll notice a little support block in the opening for the supply air. And I just cut a couple bricks into thirds and then put those in there because I did see that it was sagging and it needed that support. Hopefully it doesn't cut down too much on the airflow. All right, the fire is starting to get going, but uh, I realized that, uh, you know, smoke grenades only last for so long and yeah, I have to keep buying them. So I got a fog machine. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit out of control here, guys. But if I just shoot it in a little bit down here, I can see the air sucking in. And I see a lot of it coming out of these top holes, which is great. A little leakage here around the top. But the interesting thing is that I see it coming out of the larger holes all the way around the other side. I think that's just because those holes are so much larger that there's more surface area out there and the air is going to go to the path of least resistance. So what I want to do is plug some of those up before the fire gets too big and test out the other ones to see how much we can get out of these little holes here. I've got the holes plugged up and I'm going to throw some smoke in there. Ooh, check that out. It's definitely coming out over here. Let me put it in the air holes over here on this side. Oh yeah, that's coming out a lot better. All right, so the next day we ran out of light yesterday, so I wanna hit it with the orange smoke bombs this morning and see if we can get a little bit better view of what's going on. All right, here we go. Oh, look at it. Oh, you can really see it coming out of the ones with the multiple holes over there. Now, a lot is escaping underneath. Let's go to this other side. Oh, wow. There we go, there's some good streams coming out. I think what we're really missing is maybe some of the air holes at the bottom because you can see it's kind of fighting to get in there. So after all that testing and looking at the smoke, I decided to go with the half inch holes because when I was looking at the larger holes, the one and a half and the one inch holes, it seemed that the air would just kind of flow out and not be as forceful, which makes sense because it's a larger opening and so the air is probably moving slower. So with the half inch holes, it can get more towards that fire and then one inch spacing or two inch spacing, eh, why don't we meet in the middle? So we get this first section laid out for the holes and it's gonna have 15 of the half inch holes and those are gonna be spaced at an inch and a half. Now at the bottom, I'm actually gonna be doing some supply holes and those are gonna be spaced at three and three quarters of an inch and I'm gonna have six of those. So it should give the fire a lot of air on the bottom as well as provide that secondary combustion air up at the top. At least that's the theory. <laughs> All right, that was a ton of drilling, but I installed it and it looks great. I also sunk down the paver to be flush with the stone, so we're going to get some good airflow at the bottom. I do have the aluminum foil underneath there you'll still see, but I am going to do a mortar bed around there to get even with it. But I want to do that later because I want to get this fire in tonight. All right, guys, we're about 20 minutes in and I'm going to hit this thing with the fog machine and see what happens. Oh, definitely getting a lot of leakage around the top. My little aluminum foil gasket is not so hot. Oh, but look at that pouring out of the holes over here. And we're still getting some smoke, but you can see the fire is popping because this is just not the driest wood. And I think no matter what we do, we're gonna be getting some smoke on this one. 
All right, so yesterday's fire was pretty good, but I think we can do better. Even though it did start off really clean, there was some smoke that kind of worked its way in, and then I rearranged the logs, and it kind of went away, and then it came back, and I really think that that's due to the wood. So I want to give it one more go. I went ahead and I put a layer of mortar around the top of the ring because there was a little bit of smoke escaping on those smoke bombs, and I also got some wood for my dad that's been dry for like five years, so it's going to be way better than what we used, and we're going to go for it one last time, see if we can really get a smokeless fire, and see if we can get those superheated flames coming out of the side. Let's see what we can do. All right, guys, this is the last try for the video. I've got the TP ready. Let's fire this thing up and see if we can get some sweet, sweet secondary combustion flames. All right, it's starting up. Here we go. All right, we've gone a little bit smoky just like last time. I'm going to rearrange it now and try to get some better airflow in there. We are about a half hour in now, and this thing is putting out almost no smoke. This is a huge improvement even over that last one with that wet wood. So the dry wood makes all the difference. Now the only thing left to do is shoot some flames out of the side. Let's go for it. I'm just going to chunk wood on until it melts through the earth. I don't know if we're quite there yet, but I'm pretty sure I'm seeing something coming out of those holes. Oh, that is totally it! Look at that, oh man, flames coming out. That is so fantastic. All right guys, I'm chalking this one up as a huge win. I am so pleased with how this turned out and most importantly, almost no smoke. If you wanna check out some more outdoor projects like refinishing your deck or maybe storage underneath it, I've got a playlist queued up for you right there. I wanna give a big thank you to those folks that have been joining the FTBT Builders Club. And until next time guys, get out there and build something awesome.